Good morning again today. I have the honor and privilege of having another conversation with my favorite, favorite organizer, Janet Sizzle of Basic Organization. Before we start, I'd like everybody to remind, remember to click on the subscribe button. We have a fabulous series here all around uh, real estate and moving and organizing. So it's, it's worth for you to click on the subscribe button and that way you'll get notices of when we have uh, something else coming on. So without further ado, let's acknowledge Janet. How are you? Good morning. Good morning, Adrian. How are you? Great. So in the past sessions, we have talked about uh, prepping if we wanted to sell a home, what to do, how to declutter. Then the next step was, okay, we ratified a contract, movers are coming. And yeah. so at the end of the day, today we want to dedicate this session to what needs to be done now that we're moving. Like the truck is there, it's full. What do we need to do? So uh, I would like to start by asking you, uh, Janet, uh, are there any considerations that clients need to take when it comes to either renovations or things like that? What do you suggest? Right. So if at all possible, if you have the time, do any prep work you can before the movers move in and we get there. So if you have possession of your new house and you can uh, have the painting done you want or the carpets cleaned or you, or you do a renovation or start a renovation, refinish wood floors, all that, it's gonna be so much easier with the house empty. So even things, even things like landscaping, um, if you have the time, do it beforehand because you're, you're kind of in this, in this middle ground where you don't have a house, but then really quickly projects stack up once you get into the new place. So your suggestion is going back to when we were planning, we have a ratified contract. If we already know where we're moving, then it would be important for us to undertake those um, you know, chores, if I can call them that, or renovations before we move in. That's a great right. suggestion. Think about anything that can be done easier with the empty house, you know, look at doing empty. Right. And in addition to like deep cleaning, people tend to forget that. It's yes. like deep clean the property before you move in. Don't have the movers come in, drop the boxes, and then you have to start to, to do that. Right. Okay. So we've gone through that. We have a plan. Renovations have been done. We've deep cleaned. What is the next step? Okay, so you, you have a date when the movers are going to arrive to bring you all your items, and that is going to be a really big day. So be prepared. Um, when anybody, when you move, there's a lot happening in your life. You're having to, to uh, you know, sign your kids up at a new school, and you need to put groceries in your refrigerator, and you know all of those just life things things happen, but realize that when the movers get there, they're going to move really fast and they're not really going to ask you any questions. <laughs> they're going to assume things. So, so, so before you go there, uh -huh. I'd like to add to that uh, something that I think we haven't talked about in the past. Okay. We need to make plans for two things. As a realtor, I always give my clients a list of all their utilities. Utilities should be on. Oh, the yes. The day Absolutely. you settle, those utilities should be on. That is number one. And yes, we've talked about kids and, and adults, et cetera, but we also need to make plans for our pets. Yes, yes. So what suggestions uh, do you have yeah. in that arena? So again, on moving day, um, if at all possible, you don't really want to have your pets or your kids there. And again, because it's just a really fast moving day that um, you don't want them to get in the way. It's also very chaotic. You don't want them to get upset. Um, you know, I've had more than one day that, you know, the, the, the um, dog runs out the front door. It, you know, they just don't, they don't understand what's happening. And it also will allow you to really focus on the task at hand um, and to make sure it's done the way you want it to be done. Do you suggest having, um, because it moves fast, do you suggest having two adults on each end? That is, I'm packing the truck and unpacking the truck. Because yes. I, I feel that, you know, it goes so fast that you really need to make sure that things are happening on, 
on the place that you're leaving and things should be organizing the, to the place that you're going. What it's can you talk about that? You, it's kind of like you need to be your own advocate. So okay. you're the one that knows best what what's happening or what you mm -hmm. want to happen. The movers mm -hmm. don't know, especially if you're moving long distance, different people packed your truck than unpack the truck at, at the new location. So they really don't know you and they didn't see your old house and they don't understand that you um, now have a dedicated home office room and it's not it's no longer in bedroom number four um, or you want uh, you want to make your sunroom where all the toys land. Um, things like that need to be communicated with them. Right. And it, I mean, you turn your, you turn your back for 15 minutes and all of a sudden there's 25 boxes in a room that that's not where they belong. What um, suggestions can you make to prevent that from happening? Absolutely. So the, a little bit of prep work. So when we, um, when, when we pack a client, we very clearly mark the boxes and we have a, a way we mark them in that they're marked by room, they're marked by location in the room, and then they're marked by what is in the box. Your typical packer from a moving company is not going to be that specific. They might say kitchen, pots, and pans, but that's all. And so you might have two or three or four boxes that say pots and pans on them. So the unpacking will become a little bit harder um, but we also use colored stickers and then we hand the client um, one of each color before they leave their old house if you don't have that system that's fine get a piece of paper and tape it onto the door or a door frame of every room in your new house that says living room bedroom number three but, uh, you know, toy room, however the boxes were labeled because the movers are looking for what the box was named and they're trying to locate that, that area to, to set the box in. So a little bit of, of prep work will help it go easier in the, at the new place. So again, um, mark every room. Um, I wouldn't necessarily put it, you want to put it someplace really obvious right at the entrance of a room. So they, so they can be there. And then they don't have to ask you as many questions. Now, the furniture is not going to be labeled. So you really need to watch as they move furniture in that you can tell them what room it needs to go to. Um, and most moving companies um, put boxes on the truck first and then the furniture. And so that's how it comes off the truck. The furniture will come off first and then the boxes. So if you can, walk the house and make sure the furniture is placed where you want it. Because the last thing you wanna do, even if it's in the correct room, you don't wanna to have to move your china cabinet. It's just let the movers do it, that's what they're good at. So especially the large pieces of furniture, um, you wanna make sure that it's placed at, as closely as possible as where you want it to, to live. So I have a couple of questions for you. The first one being, um, or do you suggest when the moving truck arrives at the premises that the movers that are going to be doing the work tour the property to identify where things are going to go absolutely so the 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 you, the quality of mover you'll be able to tell they should walk through they should ask you to to give them a walk through and then the other question i had for you is as an organizer uh so i've hired you to help me with the unpacking part because we worked on the packing part and you have things labeled a certain way is it important for the homeowner to have you tour in detail the property where the furnishings uh, tchotchkes and all that are going to ensure that the move-in flows Right. It's yes. Again, the more prep work you can do. So if I if I can be there on move day and be one of the advocates for you, then I can make sure the furniture is placed where it needs to go and that the boxes go into the room they need to go into. But we also if you're moving locally, um, we also so I came from the world of space planning. So I so we offer that service as well. So again, so you know where the furniture is going to go. You have a plan before you walk in to the perfect. To the That's house. a great idea. So let's just say you're moving to the greater uh, metro Washington D.C. area, which is where we work. You know, um, Maryland D.C. and Virginia. Uh, 
what can you tell us about available resources to you as an organizer that benefit your clients? So um, often we help people move into a house and they end up with more than they can hold in the house. Um, um, it's hard to make those decisions kind of at the front end. And so you end up making them at the back end. You end up with furniture that doesn't fit or you're unpacking, you know, or we're unpacking your kitchen and, you mm -hmm. know, you realize like, I don't need three of these. So you're ready to let go of some stuff. So that's what we do for a lot of people. If a, an item is worth selling, then we can help you um, figure out the best way to try to, to, to liquidate the item. Um, but um, also there's an, an awful lot that people will just donate. Um, and certainly we can help you with that. We, we put stuff in our cars and we'll take it to a donation site. So if it's small and we'll fit, if it's small enough to fit into a car, we certainly do that because again, that's just like one more thing you have to do when you're moving in. Um, so it's a good way. And then other resources are, um, it depends on where you're, you know, we, we live in our area and we know our, our local communities. So it depends on where you're, um, moving to your realtor like you would probably be the best source of where you know the good uh, where's the closest hospital and where are the certain stores and um you know who's a good accountant or you know i'm looking for a doctor or anything like that you would have be much better resources yeah we you know? i i definitely do that homework for my clients you know once once they've yeah. chosen a property um uh, even before they write an offer um, I make sure that they know about the community. You know, where's the, where, where are you going to be doing your shopping? Where's the medical facilities? Uh, you know, um, do a little bit homework that place it on the map so they they're aware of it. Um, and also, I, I I have them Google just so they know. You know, there is a train station or the train tracks and, and you might, you know, that might be something that you love, love, love the property, don't pay attention, move in and it becomes a serious issue. So yes, definitely um, we do, at least in, in my particular case, I like to tell my clients what resources in terms of shopping, et cetera, are available for them uh, mm -hmm. in and around that community. And hopefully when they make the choice of, um, you know, of property, that that's already under the wing so they know you know where the hospitals are where the schools are where they're going to do their shopping know. you know all of that is so important it's so important when you're looking for a new house Absolutely. and you also touched upon something uh, very interesting which is services you know it's like uh, it's not just the medical services it's like where can i find an account i have a lot of clients nowadays coming in from out of state so coming in from Boston, coming in from Texas, from Atlanta. And so that is really, really key when you're moving into the greater Metro DC area. It's an additional orientation that you have to give your clients, Yes, which is We've if you were moving from one neighborhood to the other, you might not need. And it yeah. also includes, you know, entertainment where the parks are, is a dog park mm -hmm. close by, you know, all that kind of stuff. Or we have referred uh, services like a, a company that will come and hang your TV on the wall, someone who will come and build furniture for you, um, a company that will come and pick up area rugs and take them away to be cleaned. Um, I mean, there's, there, again, lawn services. You've moved into a new area. You need a new lawn service. You, you, you can ask neighbors, which is a great referral, you know, but to shop around. Um, but a realtor is usually, you guys usually have just your finger on the pulse of what's going on in your area. Yes, but on the other hand, you have the finger on the pulse for something that I hear very often, hanging art on the walls. Uh, yes, definitely. It's like, Adrian, who can help me to hang art on the walls? Now, yeah. Coming from my background, it's easy to refer, but I think you as an organizer would be better fit to provide ideas of resources for things like that. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, putting furniture mm -hmm. together, um, you know, in areas like Georgetown, the doors are so small that sometimes we have to undo the sofa to put it through the door yes. or uh, <laughs> things like that. So it's good. It's good. Once you know what's leaving and once you know where you're going, you are better fit to tell people, you know, what resources are yeah, available absolutely. for them. Absolutely. So I already feel I'm comfortable in my new place, <laughs> thanks to the services of Janet. So I hope you enjoy um, this. And uh, do you have any other ideas, Janet? 
Yeah, let me, um, one quick tip. So again, we had talked previously about there is a deadline when you're moving out of your house. And so yeah. having um, someone like an organizer come in and help you declutter and get ready to, for, to put your house on the market and then pack you to get out because you have all these deadlines. A lot of people think, oh, I've moved in. I can take the time. I can take, I can take as much time as I need to do the unpacking. And um, one thing I, I tell people is you, you know, when you'll realize when they're packing your house that everything comes out of the cabinets and out of the closets and out of, you know, out of the furniture and the volume is tremendous. It's a lot of times it's overwhelming that there's that with the furniture and the boxes in the room, it, it's overwhelming. You can barely move in a space. So we, we do offer unpacking services and they are different than what a mover says is unpacking. So read the fine print. If you wanna hire your mover to unpack you, usually what it says something like they unpack to a flat surface. Which is the floor, by the way. I found out that the, the hard floor. way. <laughs> but yeah, your flat surface is you run out of flat surface really fast. So your clothes are not put in a closet or in a dresser. The toys are not put in a cabinet. Nothing is put in your kitchen cabinets. It's all just left out. To me, that would be a nightmare. Now, they we have worked with unpackers from a moving company before they work extremely fast but they stop at that point once the items get out of the box and are unpacked their their job is done so we come in we will do the unpacking definitely and it will be a slower process because we will also organize and put everything away at the time. right and and, and, and the homeowners have to and the users i call them homeowners have to be there to know and agree of where you're putting certain things, et cetera, uh, yes. et cetera. But I also feel, having done this several times in my life, I also feel that the faster you unpack, the more, the quicker the normalcy in your life. Yes. And if you have kids and pets, that's what you should strive for. Yes. It's like, you know, even adults, I think, you know, if you're falling over boxes, week one week two is okay by week four you're shooting yourself in the head it's like well, oh my god how and it becomes daunting and and stressful i i've so, met so many people that have you know a half a garage full of boxes that they never unpacked from their last move and mm -hmm. then you know well, we want to help you avoid that situation exactly. so we do ask we ask our unpacked clients to prioritize the spaces and exactly what you said they usually say unpack my kids bedrooms first um and the kitchen is usually because then we can go in and do that in one day and you can cook dinner there that evening and you can start to live a, a little more normally okay maybe you want to unpack um, your library or your home office or your craft room or something about yourself and that's fine um um because you want to you you're, you want it the way you want it and that's that's great and that allows you to have that time instead of just being hectically trying to unpack to just have the normalcy. Yeah, in these unusual times, what I have noticed is uh, in addition to the kids' rooms and the kitchen, um, unpacking for a workspace. Oh, yes. Because yeah. people are working at home. So yes. it also gives them a sense of normalcy. Yeah. It's like the desk is in its place. Yes, but what else do I need there to well, make, you know, I'm going to be working Monday morning and this is Saturday. Uh, exactly. You know, it's like help me organize. It doesn't have to have everything on the wall and the books in place, et cetera, et cetera. But at least the sense of I can sit at my desk and whatever I need to work Monday morning is already there. You know, it's at a arm's length and um, to yes. help me feel yeah. like I can move forward. So that's I, that I, I felt recently is, is like a must. Yes. And even it, even if we if we ever go back to a a, a more like go to work someplace else type of situation. Um, it's the same way your employer expects you to show up on Monday morning and, um, you, you know, then the, and then you walk back into a house that, you know, is 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 chaotic. So right. um, definitely. So even the beginning of the unpack, if you can hire an organizer, that's it will definitely just make your life so much easier. Right, right. Very well. So again, 
Janet Schizel, Basic Organization, the greatest organizer. And um, in addition to that, she has a number of resources um, of an array of topics. So I will be putting her information uh, for all you to see. And of course, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. And what we love are questions, questions, questions. We would love to answer them. So Janet, again, thank you very much. Thanks, Adrian. This was really fun.